Today we'll be talking about one of Madrid's most visited attractions, the Prado Museum. Madrid is a memorable city and the same is true of Spain in general. There are a plethora of things to do in the Spanish capital. It's an active place full of history and culture, so within Madrid you have access to a variety of activities, including historic tours, upscale shopping, fine dining, and relaxing public spaces. All this, however, is in addition to Madrid's excellent museums. Now, the Prado in particular is located in Madrid, and it is one of the world-class art museums of Europe. This institution focuses on Spanish art, particularly in the form of painted works and sculpture prior to the 20th century. The Prado has been around for over 200 years, and many of the works were originally possessions of the Spanish crown. In fact, the structure itself was commissioned by the crown for use as a government building. Now, if you're coming from the United States, it's worth visiting the Prado in order to understand Spain's massive role in the exploration and conquest of the New World, that is, the Americas. Many of the museum's works date from this period of imperialism, so you'll gain a broader understanding of Spanish history in addition to an appreciation of the museum's extensive archive. Now, the Prado Museum is located near the historic center of Madrid, about one mile to the east of the Plaza Mayor, which is the public square in Madrid. Visiting in Prado is an easy process. You know, you book your tickets on the website, show up at the designated time, and explore the collection. That said, here are some things I like best about the Prado Museum. Number one, the collection. The Prado has a very narrow focus on Spanish art, which is unusual for a museum of its size. Number two, the building. The Prado is housed in a very old building that was always intended to be an important place, even if not initially a museum. And number three, the location. It's all about the location. Not only is the Prado very close to the center of Madrid, but it's also adjacent to the Retiro Park, which in many ways is like the Prado's outdoor counterpart. And as a reminder, these are my interpretations of the Prado Museum as I experienced it. You may have a different interpretation when you visit. And for this reason, you should always consider your personal preferences and exercise independent judgment before traveling to new destinations. So first, let's talk about the collection. The Prado, above all else, has an excellent body of work. It is a terrific collection that, in spite of its size, is very directed. That is not to say you can't find international works here, but as the National Museum of Spain, you will find many works from Spanish artists that articulate Spanish lifestyles. There is a specific emphasis on Spanish art and the cultural expression that manifests as a result of that. This emphasis is different in what might be encountered in other museums in the Western world. And the reason is because romance cultures in general are much more uninhibited in terms of their relationships with the outside world. And this is evident in many of the themes of the artist's paintings at the Prado. You know, there could be more of an emphasis on the human condition in things like passion, romance, sadness, faith, optimism, tragedy, growth, destruction. These themes give insight into what the Spanish prioritize and place a premium on. Now, within the museum, you'll find a number of paintings from Spanish artists, including Salvador Dali and Francisco Goya. You will also understand that Spain has many influences on its culture, particularly from Catholic, Moorish, and Arabic societies. And these influences shape how the country views itself today. Probably the most famous piece at the Prado Museum is Las Meninas by Diego Velazquez. It's a painting about while well, painting, of all things, dating back to the 17th century. Many historians have attempted to decipher its meaning over the years, which seems to be one of the biggest mysteries surrounding the work. But in my perspective, the intent is very straightforward. You know, it's a very well done breaking of the fourth wall, to use a TV analogy. It illustrates the painting process behind the scenes, essentially. Famous 17th century artists, you know, they still had fam families and distractions that would interrupt them while they were trying to work, like the rest of us. Another aspect to like about the Prado is the building. I found the building in and of itself to be quite interesting. You should know that the structure that houses the Prado collection was not originally intended to be a museum. In fact, it was constructed in 1785 as a government building. However, the museum did get its start not long after that in 1819. This makes the Prado one of the oldest continuously operating museums in the world. From the outside, the Prado does in fact look like a government building. You know, the facade that faces the west in the direction of Plaza Mayor is decorated with sculptures and columns across the length of the building, which give the structure a sense of importance. And then on the north side of the Prado is the entrance vestibule, and this is where you'll enter the modern museum. This section is interesting because it's partially underground and it contrasts sharply with the older historic building. 
And then once inside the main building, you have many small galleries housing different parts of the collection, which make the viewing experience more intimate. And within many of these rooms, there are very ornate ceilings, which reinforce the stately feel of the Prado. And finally, there's the location. The Prado has an excellent location in central Madrid. It's adjacent to the Plaza Mayor and the Sol, both about a mile to the west. And then on the south side of the museum's grounds, you have access to the Botanical Garden, which is next to the main building. And this Botanical Garden should not be confused with the Retiro Park immediately to the east of the museum. This park is a separate entity. The Prado's Botanical Garden Botanical Garden, however, is somewhat of a continuation of the Retiro Park with its many shaded walking paths, flowers, and so forth. And so in that sense, the garden is something of a link between the museum and the park. Now, transport connections to the museum are good as well because the Atocha Railway Station is located just to the south of the Prado. The Atocha Station, in fact, is a hub for local commuter trains across Spain, and the Madrid subway, which drives on the left side of the tunnels, has excellent coverage throughout most areas of the city. Now let's talk about some things to know before you go. First, you may be able to enter the Prado Museum without needing to purchase a ticket beforehand if you're willing to visit later in the evening, perhaps an hour or two before the building closes. You'll need to look at the website to see if this option is still available, however, and if you're planning on doing this, expect to stand in a very long line that wraps around the west side of the building. But the line does move quickly. Um, make sure you get in the line early so you have enough time to see everything. But in general, I would recommend booking a dedicated slot, and this allows you enough time to explore the museum's collection without issues. You know, your vacation is the last place where you should feel stressed and rushed. I would also avoid trying to see both the Prado and the nearby Retiro Park in the same day. While they're both central to other points of interest and close to each other, you'll need a good three hours to enjoy either attraction in, 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 their, in its entirety. Um, you'll be on your feet for the entire time at either one, so what I recommend is to take a, take a dedicated day to check out the museum and what it has to offer on its own, and then you can visit the park separately. You know, both are excellent options, highly recommended options, in fact, that shouldn't be missed while in Madrid, however, and I may do a separate trip report explaining the Retiro Park in the future. So that's the Prado Museum. Hopefully you will have been convinced to go by now. It is an excellent choice for history and art buffs, and it does give a lot of insight into Spanish culture, particularly from around the time the New World was being established. I highly recommend it to visitors who are interested in Spanish culture. You may do well to check out other resources where you can see what people are saying about the Prado Museum. You know, take note of the works visitors recommend and try to understand the artist's intent as you look at the works. You know, how do you feel afterwards? Do you have a better understanding of the work? Do you have a better understanding of history? Do you have an understanding of why the world is the way it is now? You know, these are the kinds of questions you want to ask yourself. These are some things to think about. And if you've been in the Prado or any other interesting museums lately, you know, let's hear about it because travelers always have their eyes open for the next interesting place to go. But everything isn't always discoverable online. And this is why I encourage you to share your thoughts and help build the community. Other visitors need to be able to start somewhere and the learnings you provide from your own experiences can help others in that regard. Safe travels.